Sergio Garcia has enjoyed 20 years at golf's top table, racking up 31 career wins, including his stunning Masters triumph. He spent much of his career near the sharp end of the world rankings, which he puts down to fortune and good old-fashioned hard work. He could only have dreamed of hitting such heights when he won the Amateur Championship 21 years ago, and his standing in the game owes a lot to consistency. I think there's a couple of things. Obviously, you have to have some sort of a uh, little bit of something, a little bit of talent, a little bit of something. So that that's obviously there. But uh, but I think I've been I've been very fortunate with injuries. Uh, I haven't really had any major injuries uh, throughout my career. So that. Uh, gave me, uh, has given me the possibility of, of playing pretty much non-stop uh, throughout my 20 years as a professional. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just, I've just been fortunate to, you know, be consistent uh, like, uh, like, I have, like I have been and hopefully I'll be, I'll be able to do it for, for another 10 or 15 years. I do love it. Obviously, my priorities have changed. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm married now and I have a beautiful wife, I have a beautiful little girl. I'm still a competitor, I still love to do well. But it definitely uh, has changed a little bit, uh, but you know, I still love the game. Fans and the media alike often assume winning headline events is all that gets the game's biggest players going, but many take huge satisfaction from churning out decent results and working their way out of a slump, even when they can't find their A-game. This has been something of a Sergio Garcia speciality. We all love winning, but to be totally honest, I, I rather have consistency. I, I rather have a year where I give myself a lot of chances of winning, even if I don't win any. It feels, it feels like your game is in a better shape than, uh, like for example, last year, I, you know, if you take away the three months in the middle, I had, a, I had a really good year, you know, I had two wins, obviously the Ryder Cup, I had uh, a good amount of top tens, but, but you know, those three, three and a half months were tough, you know, a lot of uh, miscuts by one that, that usually I don't do and, and things like that. So, um, you know, it kind of leaves a little bit of a sour taste in your mouth. Um, so, you know, I just, uh, I just want to try to make sure that that, uh, that doesn't happen again. The only thing you can do is just keep believing in yourself, keep working hard, and, and hope for the tide to, to change. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, it takes a little bit longer than, than, than other times. Uh, you hope that you know, it's just going to be a couple of weeks and then you kind of get back on the horse. But I've always said it, you learn more from those tough moments than from, from the, good, the really good weeks. Garcia has become synonymous with the European Ryder Cup team during his years on tour. It's an environment in which he's thrived. So despite a tough few months leading into last year's edition in Paris, Captain Thomas Bjorn had no hesitation in making him a wild card pick. It's quite simple, I just, I just love it. I love the Ryder Cup, I love the, the format, I love the, you know, the, the relationships you build with, uh, with your fellow players. So it's just, uh, it's just so different and you know, being a team event instead of individual that we play every, every other week, um, it, just, uh, it just feels so different and, and you know, that's some of the reasons why, uh, why I love it. I've been fortunate to play to play many, and, and all of them are, are special and, and and incredible. Last year's in in, in Paris was uh, was amazing. Uh, the combination of the course, the weather, the crowds, uh, the build up to it, uh, everything, and and then how how well we all played. You know, it kind of it kind of made it for for an amazing week. In defeating Ricky Fowler in the Sunday singles at Le Golf National. Sergio became the highest point scorer in Ryder Cup history. The emotional scenes that followed, and again when Francesco Molinari sealed Europe's victory, demonstrated how much the event means to him and his peers. To be able to win the Ryder Cup again and, uh, and achieve uh, being the highest uh, point scorer ever in the, in the history of the Ryder Cup, you know, it meant so much. Uh, when it happened, uh, I didn't think about it until pretty much it happened. But when it happened, obviously, it meant a lot because it meant that uh, I surpassed, you know, uh, my my heroes, my childhood, my childhood heroes, and uh, some unbelievable players. So um, it was um, it was extremely special to to be able to achieve that and to do it against a good friend of mine like like Ricky. It was it was even more special. So uh, I mean, that's that's what I was. That's why I told him, you know, when. Well, we hugged it out on, on 17. Between 1999 and 2017, 
Garcia notched up 21 top 10s in major championships. But it seemed a precious victory might elude him forever. Then, two years ago, he finally landed his deserved major. Augusta National is holy ground for pros worldwide, and it earned an even more important place in Sergio's heart when he defeated Justin Rose in a playoff there to win the Masters in 2017. Yeah, it's uh, it's always been special. Uh, I think now, uh, as a you know, as a past Masters champion, uh, obviously it's it's more special because uh, everything that brings uh, being being a Masters champion. You know, so it's uh, it's really. It's really an honor, it's really amazing. Uh, and you know, we're, we're excited to, to go back there every year and enjoy the champions dinner and, and everything that, that, that goes around and wearing the jacket around. And so it's, uh, it's really fun and uh, you know, we're, we're excited to keep going and hopefully get, uh, get another one of those. It'll be, it'll be nice to get another, another beautiful green jacket.